I've been getting a lot of requests from the community where they are interested in vulnerability management, but aren't sure what projects they can do. Which is why in today's video, I'm going to walk you through on how you can get started with one of the most popular vulnerability scanners that many organizations use called Tenable Nessus. We will be using the Essentials version, aka the free version. And this is more than enough for you to get started as it allows you to scan up to 16 hosts that you own. At the end, I'll provide you with a project idea that you can try out if you want to get some hands-on experience as a vulnerability analyst. Let's get started. All right, onto my virtual machine. I am using ESXi as my hypervisor, but you can use VirtualBox or VMware to spin up your virtual machines. I'll be using a Windows 10 machine and a Kali Linux machine. Kali is going to be my target machine and I'll be installing Nessus onto my Windows machine. Now I already have the Nessus download page up and running and I'll leave a link down below for you to click and download as well. Now, when you're on this page, you want to make sure that you're selecting the correct platform. So in my example, there is a Windows 32-bit and there's also a Windows 64-bit. This was selected automatically for me by default, so I'll just leave it as is and I will click on download. You'll get hit with this license agreement. Just click on I agree. Once the download is complete, you want to perform a file hash on the MSI file and compare it with the checksum. So I'll go ahead and hold shift, right click, and click on open PowerShell window here. And then I'll type in get dash file hash. Then I'll type in nest and then hit tab for auto completion. Hit enter. And by default, it will calculate the SHA-256 hash. And in the beginning, it is 1AFF. And at the end, it is B461. So if we head over to Nessus, click on the checksum, we have 1AFF. And at the end, we have B461. And again, taking a look at PowerShell, B461, 1AFF. Perfect. So now that the file hash is matched, and I know that this is the correct file, we can just double click the MSI file and we'll follow the prompts. I accept, next, next, and install. Once the MSI file is done installing, we can click on finish and a web page should automatically pop up. We'll get a connect via SSL and we want to select that. It'll say your connection isn't private. That's okay. Click on advanced and continue. Now Nessus is going to take a while to initialize and we'll come back once that's done. All right, after a couple minutes, we get this screen here. It says, welcome to Nessus. Register offline or continue or settings. And I'll just go ahead and select continue. And the one that we want is the Nessus Essentials because this is the free version for Nessus. And then click on continue. If you don't already have an activation code, this is where you will register to get that code, enter in your first and last name and your valid email because the activation code will be sent to your email. Now, because I already have one, I'll go ahead and skip this step. When you receive your activation code, you wanna make sure you include the dashes. So for example, you can type in AAA and then BBB, that won't work. So you need to type in a dash and then the following characters. If you don't include the dash, activation will fail. And then you'll be asked to create a user account. I'll name this as my DFIR, and then we'll enter in a password. Click on submit. And now it starts initializing again. And just like before, this will take a while. So I do recommend you go and grab some water, eat some food and come back to it. Sooner or later, you'll be presented with this screen here. Now, if you look at the top right corner next to the question mark, you'll see the spinning icon. Let me close this out here. If you were to hover over this icon, you'll see that it's compiling plugins with a percentage. You need to wait until it is finished compiling the plugins before you can start your new scan. What this means is that we'll need to wait a little bit longer. After waiting for about a year and a half, your plugins should be finished compiling. Now, if you click on the bell icon, you can see that the plugins are done compiling and you no longer have the icon that is spinning before. Now that we have the plugins good to go, we can actually start a new scan. And to do that, we'll just simply click on the new scan button on the right. And we have a lot of different scan templates. 
The first one, we have host discovery. So this is a simple scan to discover live hosts and open ports, which is quite similar to Nmap if you've ever used that before. At the bottom, we have vulnerability scans, and these are basic network scans, advanced, advanced dynamic, malware, and just a bunch of other vulnerability scanners. In this demo, I am going to just select the basic network scan. And here we can start entering in our settings. I'll name this scan as testing and the description as VM test. The folder, I'll leave it as my scans. And for the target, this is where you can enter in an IP, an IP range, or an IP with a CIDR notation or a host name. Now, if you have a file that contains a list of IP addresses or host names, you can add the file over here. And I'll be targeting my Kali Linux machine, which is on 192.168.100.101. And I recommend you spin up a Kali Linux machine or even better use something like Metasploitable and then use Nessus to scan that box. On the left, we have a couple options here. We have schedule and notifications. Schedule is if you wanted to schedule your scan. If we click on discovery, we can see the scan type. So right now it is selected as common ports. If I click on the drop down, we have all ports or custom. I'll select all ports. And we can see the settings here, general settings, port scanner, and ping host. Clicking on assessment, clicking on the drop down, we have scan for known web vulnerabilities, scan for all web vulnerabilities, quick and complex. And lastly, we have custom. I'll select the scan for all web vulnerabilities quick. Now, I don't think my Kali Linux machine will have that, but I'll select that just in case. Then we have report. So this just gives you the different options when it comes to reporting. Click on advanced. And just like before, clicking on the drop down, we can modify our scanner. I'll leave this as default for now. At the top, we have a couple tabs. We have credentials and plugins. So if we click on credentials, this will perform what are called authenticated scans. And if you were to run Nessus within a production environment and wanted to retrieve more information, an authenticated scan is the way to go. However, in this example, I'll leave this as blank. Next are the plugins. Plugins are essentially an add-on to Nessus. What additional information do you want Nessus to look for? And this is where you would select that. For example, if I'm interested in brute force attacks, I'll click on that. And on the right, we'll get the plugins. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit save and that will save out the scan. To start it, we just need to select the play button on the right. I'll click on that. And we can see the spinning icon. If we hover over it, it says running. So we'll just let that run. And when it's done, we'll take a look at the results. To know if your scan has successfully completed, you'll now see a check mark icon. If I hover over it, it says completed. So I'll go ahead and click on that. At the top, we have a couple of tabs here. We have the host, vulnerabilities, and history. I'll click on vulnerabilities. And if we look at the table here, we have the severity and a couple scores, the name, family, and the count of the vulnerability as well. I'll click on mixed, so the first vulnerability. And we can see that it is open BSD, open SSH. So if I click on the medium severity, It'll provide us with the vulnerability that was found on our Kali Linux machine, which in this case is SSH, Terra pin, prefix, truncation, weakness. And it provides us with the description of this vulnerability along with the solution. And they provide you a link to see additional information. And here's the output of the scan. And if we scroll up, we do see a tab called report. So this is where you can start generating a report. Now, before I do that, I am going to click on back to vulnerability group because if I were to select report, it would only export this vulnerability. I want to export all of the vulnerabilities. So I'll go back to the main page where it lists out all of it, and then I'll click on report. So you can generate your report and have it as a HTML format or CSV. And underneath you get your report template. So you get complete list of vulnerabilities by host, detailed vulnerabilities by host or by plugin and vulnerability operations. Now I'm going to select the default, which is complete list of vulnerabilities, and I'll click on generate report. Once that's done downloading, we can go ahead and open that up and we get a nice 
overview of the number of vulnerabilities that exist on this particular host. Now you can send this off to your client and get paid. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That is a terrible idea and you don't want to do that. Although, sure, you can use this report template and generate a report to help you get started. But you should do more than that and actually try to provide some more value to your client. For example, what are the vulnerabilities that the client should be worried about? And by the way, not all critical vulnerabilities should be treated equally. And to provide more value to your client or to your organization, you must first understand the client's environment and know how they are set up. I'll give you an example. Imagine a company using Windows XP and you scan their organization and Windows XP has a ton of critical vulnerabilities. But further down the list, you notice a server that is exposed to the internet that has a high vulnerability, but zero critical. Which one should the company focus on first? The answer should be, it depends. If the Windows XP machine is behind multiple layers of defense and not exposed to the public, then perhaps the company should focus on the public facing server first because that is accessible to everyone. Context matters and simply generating a report from Nessus and telling a client to remediate all critical vulnerabilities is not good enough. Because if you think about it, in a production environment, you will likely have a ton of vulnerabilities and it isn't realistic for a company to remediate all of those vulnerabilities. You as a vulnerability analyst must provide that additional value to the client and help them prioritize what really matters. Just because you have a critical vulnerability doesn't mean that that's the one that they should focus on first. That is a very high level overview of what Nessus can do. In fact, it is quite powerful depending on the plugins that you use and can be customized to fit your needs. Here is a project idea for you if you're interested in becoming a vulnerability analyst. The first thing you want to do is download and set up Metasploitable and put that machine in the same network as your Nessus. And then imagine that a client had hired you to scan their machine. You are responsible in creating a report that contains the vulnerabilities, but also what the client should focus on remediating first and why. Document your steps and findings on GitHub or any blog site of your choosing and practice your documentation skills. Bonus points if you can remediate the vulnerabilities that you found. If you do decide to take on this project, feel free to send me your site as I would love to check it out. And that is it for the video. I hope you found that informative. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.